Chamber of Law, the Chief Justice, and the Associate Justices of the Supreme Court of the United States. Oh, yay, oh, yay, oh, yay. On Wednesday, April 25th, the Supreme Court of the United States will hear oral argument in State of Arizona versus United States of America. This case will revisit one of the most important questions in our constitutional system, the allocation of power between the federal government and the states. The case considers a potential clash between two pairs of provisions in the Constitution. It considers a clash between the Supremacy Clause in Article 6 of the Constitution, which says that federal law is paramount over state law, and the Tenth Amendment to the United States Constitution, which reserves to the states any powers that the states did not delegate through the Constitution to the federal government in 1789 when the Constitution was written. It also considers a clash between a federal statute, the Immigration and Nationality Act, which has been amended many times in recent years, and the inherent police power of the states. In the particular case, the state of Arizona is appealing a decision of the United States Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit, which affirmed a preliminary injunction granted by the United States District Court for the District of Arizona. The District Court enjoined the enforcement of four provisions of a new Arizona statute that regulates the activities of persons found in Arizona who are not lawfully in the United States. In its defense of the statute before the Supreme Court, Arizona has argued in its briefs that the state of Arizona in particular compared to other states has a huge problem with unlawful immigration because of its very long border with Mexico. And the reason the state of Arizona emphasizes the adverse impact on the state of Arizona from unlawful immigration is that that invites the court to recognize that Arizona has an inherent police power as an attribute of its sovereignty as a state to take reasonable law enforcement measures to deal with this special crisis in Arizona. Four provisions of the Arizona law are in controversy. Sections 2B and 6 are related in that they expand the powers of Arizona law enforcement authorities to enforce federal immigration law. Section 2B says that when Arizona law enforcement officers make any lawful stop, detention, or arrest, when there's reasonable suspicion that the target of the law enforcement activity is an alien and is unlawfully present, that the law enforcement officers must verify the immigration of that the immigration status of that person and cannot release the person until the immigration status has been determined. Section 6 expands the warrantless arrest powers of Arizona law enforcement officials whenever they have probable cause to believe that the person has committed a public offense that makes the person removable under federal immigration law. Now Arizona defends those two provisions as mainstream authorization for police activities by its own law enforcement agents. 
well within, Arizona says, the authority of any sovereign state to enforce the law. And not only that, Arizona points out that in general, state law enforcement officers have the power and the responsibility to enforce federal law as well as state law. The federal government, on the other hand, in challenging the constitutionality of the Arizona statute, says that these two provisions, Section 2B and Section 6, put the state of Arizona in the position of making its own judgments about immigration law rather than deferring to the federal government's exclusive competence in this area. Another provision, Section 3, makes it a crime under Arizona law not to have the documentation that is required by the federal immigration statute. Arizona argues, what's the problem here? We're not undermining federal law, we're just adding to the enforcement arsenal to reinforce federal law. The federal government argues that this is an impermissible intrusion into the exclusive power of the federal government to regulate immigration. And the final provision in controversy is Section 5.6 of the Arizona law, which penalizes undocumented aliens from seeking or obtaining employment. Arizona says, what's the problem here? It's already illegal under federal law for employers to give these people a job, so all we're doing is ad addressing the supply side of the equation to make it illegal for these people to seek jobs. The United States government argues that Arizona, by imposing legal penalties for seeking or obtaining employment, adopts a measure that the Congress of the United States expressly rejected when it wrote recent amendments to the Federal Immigration and Naturalization Act. More broadly, the federal government argues that the foreign affairs power in the United States Constitution envisions that the federal government should have the exclusive power to regulate immigration and citizenship in large part because the regulation of immigration and citizenship is a very sensitive subject in the foreign relations of the United States. And everybody agrees that individual states within our federal system don't have the power to engage in diplomatic relations with foreign countries. This case is attracting a great deal of attention because human rights advocates fear that laws like this Arizona law will result in unnecessary harassment of persons of foreign origin lawfully in the United States. And it also has excited attention by other states and states' rights advocates who say that the federal government is not doing enough to deal with the problem of unlawful immigration and that the states should be entitled to do something on their own to deal with what's a real problem in terms of public order and regulation of labor markets. So it will be interesting to hear the oral arguments on Wednesday and to see how the Supreme Court gives further guidance to how the federal government should relate to the states that comprise the United States in the allocation of legal power.